Hello, this is heat load calculation part 13. We're dealing with infiltration on this one. Uh, there's some corrections that need to be made. These are uh, out of the book and I've just noticed them as we was doing them. Um, but this would be worksheet E for your infiltration. Now we're doing the Valtilo house in Texas Gulf Coast town. This is in section 7 of your book and we're moving it to Birmingham, Alabama. So some of our numbers are going to change. So let's take a look here real quick. This is the worksheet E that we will be doing. Uh, this one again moves from columns like we was doing in worksheet D to lines. So we're going from left to right all the way across and then moving down as we go. Some of the corrections I wanted to point out is right here. This should be two, line two. This one right here should be line three. This should be line four, line five, and line five. Uh, I believe down here had line eight and line nine, and this was like six and seven, which is incorrect. Like I said, the calculation wouldn't turn out completely right if you did it that way. So. Looking where the information comes from, I've got a box around this part right here. This part actually comes from the survey. All the information you'll find on this part comes from the blueprint or survey. This part right here comes from Worksheet A or J1AE, and you can use either one of those you want to. Uh, I did put some information down here. Like I said, you know, sometimes there's questions asked, like, well, what is it, like in this calculation right here, this is the formula that you use to solve this part right here, this formula you use to solve this part right here, and this is the formula you use to solve this part right here. And sometimes people ask, what is 1.1? And it's just a physics comp, uh, constant that converts pounds of air into volume. And uh, the 0 0.68, uh, here you go, it's based on standard conditions. Uh, if you remember me talking about standard conditions, it's basically how air is at sea level at a specific temperature, 70 degrees. Uh, this is just a... You know, we can't really predict exactly what every single thing is going to be, so this kind of gives us a constant to work with that. So this is just where some of those numbers come from. Uh, the grains differential, of course, are 7,000 grains uh, equal to one pound of water. So this is all uh, figures up into your latent heat. Now, infil infiltration is going to give you three answers that you're going to put on your J1AE. The main ones is this one here, which would be your heating BTUs, this one here, which would be cooling BTUs, and this one right here, which is going to be your latent load. Uh, latent load, like I said, all uh, these two up here, the first two, are sensible. So raising, lowering temperature, that kind of thing. This is what that's going to be. The latent load is going to deal with moisture. Of course, why is moisture important? because BTUs per hour is lost uh, to the load in a home. It takes energy to convert moisture in air, vapor, and turn it into liquid. If you have a latent load that's 6,000 BTUs per hour, you basically be losing a half a ton of cooling, just converting water vapor into liquid instead of raising and lowering the temperature of your room. So this is why infiltration is very important. We have to have a certain amount of humidity for our people, usually around 50%. Most people work anywhere between 45 to 55%. That's where most humans are most comfortable. You can't have special design conditions where you may go up and above or below that, depending. Uh, dealing with something like this, gross exposed wall area, a little bit different, in other words, known as war or wall area ratio. And basically it's just the total exposed wall. Uh, if you've seen these numbers before, the house is 40 by 30. But we just add up the perimeter of it for 140 feet. The walls are 8 foot high, so 140 times 8 foot gives you that 1120 uh, square footage that we're looking for right here. This information also goes up here in the top right hand corner and you'll put it up here as well for exposed walls. Uh, but, you know, any, anywhere that we have ex, uh, an exposure to the outside, that's where infiltration is going to make its migration to the walls. And, of course, we want a certain amount of humidity. We're gunning for, like I said, 50% relative humidity. 
So anything higher or greater that inside or out, we're either going to be losing humidity or gaining humidity, depending on how it goes. We're also going to do internal gains right here because there's not a whole lot of numbers and that will finish out this top part up here before we get into duct lossage. So we're dealing with line 12 and line 13, but we're going to deal with line 12 first, but line 13, some of the information that we get right here, we're going to be able to put it into here. So let's kind of look at what they had. This is, like I said, of course, this is from the J manual. This is the example house that was given to us. And of course, like I said, lines running down this way now, instead of like the columns running up and down, now we're running left to right, and we're just coming down through here working these as we go. So our survey is the first area where we got information that we're gonna to have to put on this thing. So let's look at R. Worksheet E. So here we go. Worksheet E. And like I said, the first thing we got is floor area, square footage. So you got a heating and a cooling load. And then you have conditions above grade volume. So this is cubic feet. So this one right here, we're going to deal with just length times width for the total square footage that we are heating and cooling. And like I said, why are there two different numbers there? You know, this is a block load. Well, depending on the area you live, you have a, you may have a lot more heating area that you want than cooling area or vice versa. So it just depends on the area that you cover. But just make sure we do this one in cubic feet. So this is going to be volume. So this is going to be length times width times height. This one right here is just going to be length times width. So let's look at our survey and take a look and see here what we got. Now, the information that we're going to need for this home, for all of this information, is kind of scattered all over here. So we need to just kind of, you know, once again, always carefully read all your blueprints and any information that's given to you. Uh, you know, write it down. If you have to shuffle it around and make it and put it in areas where it makes more sense to you, then go ahead. So. The first thing on the infiltration, like I said, is our house dimensions. It's right up here. So our footprint is 40 by 30. So 40 by 30, and we'll just do the calculator just for everybody. 40 times 30, that means we have 1,200 square foot of home. So we'll go back to our worksheet. And we're cooling and heating 1,200 square feet. Now we have to do the volume. So basically, it's the same thing, 40 times 30. And then we look, and it tells you right here that we have eight foot high ceiling. So times eight. And we get 9,600 cubic feet. So put that back on. So we're heating and cooling 9,600 cubic feet. Next question it asks, number of bedrooms. So number of bedrooms. This one was kind of hidden down here in the bottom, but a lot of times that information will be located through it, or the physical blueprint would show you the number of bedrooms. So in this house, which it doesn't have it kind of chopped out because it's just a simple block load, but it, uh, no, there is walls and doors and everything, interior parts to it. But we got two bedrooms, okay? So number of bedrooms, 2.0. Okay, number of occupants. Well, that's pretty simple. Like I said, you basically just take the number of bedrooms, which is two, and then add one. Because, you know, if a couple was together, they would probably be sleeping in the same room, mom and dad, so that's two. And then if they had another room, that'd be a third person. So, three occupants. Number of fireplaces. Okay, let's see here. Uh, right here we have a little bit of information. It says we have a refrigerator range, no washer, no dryer, and no plants, okay? But up over here, it says all electric home. So if it's all electric home, there's no way we would probably have a gas or a wooden fireplace. So that would be 0, 0.0. Okay, next part here is gonna go back to worksheet A. 
so we can close out the survey. Let's go back to worksheet A that we did originally. <clears throat> Bring it up here. And like I said, and see if we can get this where we can see both of them at the same time. All right, first thing is our HTD. Our HTD for this house is 46 right here. 46.0. And our cooling uh, CTD is 18. Our T1 grains differential is 39 right here. And our altitude correction factor for Birmingham, Alabama Airport is 0 0.981. Now we should be ready to start working down our chart here. And like I said, we're going to do line. This is a line go all the way across till we get to the other side. So our table construction, our envelope is average. Like I said, we have an average. Uh, fireplaces in A, don't have one. So number of fireplaces, 0.0. .0. Next, we're going to need to go to table 5A for air changes for heating and air changes for cooling. So we'll bring up table 5A. I'm going to close that out because we don't need that anymore. And close a couple of these other ones so we can clean up our workspace here. And let's go to table 5A. Now, I've used some boxes to kind of break table 5A into two parts. These are usually just all black lines and everything like that. But this will kind of help you see exactly what we're talking about. The, the box in red is air changes per hour for heating. The box down here is air changes per hour for cooling. Uh, if you wanted to know what tight, semi-tight, average, semi-loose, uh, and loose meant, you can read this part down here. Of course, nowadays, like I said, you should be doing a blower door test on a house and, and getting what it actually is. And like I said, you know, and also a duct blasting test to see if you have leakages there, which is the next part that we're going to come into or the uh, on down the line through our heat load calculation. Now we've got to find our air changes per hour. So that means we need to figure out which one we have. Well, looking at this chart, right here it tells us the envelope is average so we have an average leaking house so we're going to be using this line right here so we're using this line all the way across through here and then we need our square footage of our home well we know our home was 40 by 30 which gives us 1200 square foot so we're right in this chart here if it was above 1500 we'd use this one below 2000 and if it was you know 3000 or more you'd be using this one up here but since we're 1200 we're right in the sweet spot right here so we're going to be on this column right here. So all you got to do is where the two intersect and 0 0.45 is our answer there. Okay. Next is our fireplace CFM. Well, we don't have fireplace in this house, so 0, 0.0. Fireplace adjustment, 0, 0.0. Okay. Moving along to the next line, back to table for the cooling. We're going to find our cooling for this one. Remember, it's a 1,200 square foot home. So 1,200 square foot home, we're going to be in this column right here. Average tightness, so 0 0.23. Okay. Now, here we go. We just have to move left to right. So now we're on line four here, infiltration CFM for heating. This is where, you know, like I told you, you need to correct that because it had line six and that would be incorrect. And line seven here, that would be incorrect. It should be line two and line three. So line two is 0 0.45. So line two air changes per hour, 0 0.45, times above grade volume of heating, which above grade volume would be the 9600 up here divided by 60 an hour plus total line six CFM for the fireplace. So 
We don't have a fireplace, so we don't have to worry about that part. But we just have to do this little formula right here, and I'll bring the calculator up for that. So, uh, line two is 0 0.45 times our above grade volume for heating, which is 9600 up here. And we're going to divide it by 60. And we get 72. Okay. Now we do the same thing on the next one. We're going to use our line 3 air changes per hour times our above grade volume for cooling, which is also 9600, and divide it by 60. So we got 0 0.23 times 9600, and we divide that by 60, and we get 36.8. zero there just keep it going all right now if you notice it didn't have the fireplace adjustment something really important I just wanted to show you about that as you can see zero infiltration for fireplaces and cooling and that's because hot air rises cold air falls like I said so typically air wants to go out of the chimney during the cooling season and as the room you know hot air gets in the room it would naturally want to go up a chimney it can't come down the chimney. Hot air can't come down the chimney, it can't bring it in. So infiltration rates are not as important in that aspect right there. It is in the cooling season, because like I said, if we're ripping uh, hot air and we're trying to push it into the home, that means we're dragging in cold air to make up through it and go up out the chimney. So we should be done with this. We'll close that one out. And now all we have to do is simply do this little formula right here beside this one here. So this is the infiltration load for heating BTU per hour. So this is going to go to our J1AE, this one's going to go to our J1AE, and this one's going to go to our J1AE. So all we got to do is just plug in the numbers. So it says 1.1 times our air change correction factor, which is 0. 1.1 times 0 0.981 times line 4, this is another one that I told you need to correct, make sure it is correct, times line 4, and let me slide it over for a second, so you see line 4, line 4 is right here, so that's the 72, uh, 1.1 times 0 0.981 times 72 times our HTD and I did it again alright 1.1 times let's clear it out 1.1 times 0 0.981 times 72 times 46. We get this big number here. Now, like I said, if this number here was bigger, we would round this up. But since we're going to the thousandths place, we're simply going to put in what we got 3,573.979. Okay, now we're going to do the same on the next one. 1.1 times our altitude correction factor, 0 0.981, times line 5 CFM, which is our 36.80, times our CTD, which is our temperature differential, 18. So 1.1 times 0 0.981 times 36.80 times 18. And we're going to round this number up to six right here. So our number is going to be 714.796. Okay. Last problem we're going to do right here is uh, 0 0.68 times out to correction factor, 0 
20. Line 5 CFM. I'm going to slide this over so you can see line 5. Line 5 is 36 times our T1 grains. Set that one right there. So 0 0.68 times 0 0.981, or I'll do correction factor, times line 5 CFM, which is 36.80 times T1 grains, which is 39. End up with a latent load of 957.393. Okay, now we got all these numbers done, we got everything completed. And it said a maximum of 50 CFM error may be piped to the return side of heat and cooling equipment for worksheet H. Uh, infiltration CFM is not adjusted for. Space pressure affected by ventilation air. The infiltration load six, seven, eight, and inform J one. So we're going to take this information and some of this information here, and we're going to fill out our J one E now. So let's bring it up. Here's our J one A E, and we're going to go down here to the bottom, and we're going to put some of these numbers in. So, so we know what our Gross air wall is going to be, it's 1120, 140 times 8. So you get that right there. Uh, envelope leakage, this is going to be average. So you have average leaking home. Fireplaces, zero. Like I said, infiltration CFM for heating and cooling. Uh, we do know the number of bedrooms right off the bat. We know we have two bedrooms in this. Like I said, number of occupants is going to be 3.0, and there we go. All right, now let's see. Now we just need to transpose some of these numbers over. Now, like I said, latent is down here, cooling is right here, heating is right here. Like I said, we didn't have partition floors, so I'm going to go ahead and put an NA there so we don't mess up. But we are going to be right here. So we'll start with the heat and load first. Copy and paste, and that heat and load goes right here. Okay. Next is our cooling. Got that in there. And finally, our latent load. It's going to go down here. On line A of 21, it says late and low for infiltration, which is our 957. We'll just copy it and bring it in here. Okay. Um, like I said, where, where is this infiltrate and heating and cooling coming from? Like I said, we'll just take a peek here. And there you go, it's 72 and 37. So where did they get the 72 and the 37 from? Uh, right here, 72, 37. So like I said, our two numbers that we got on line four and line five, they're gonna transfer over as well. If I can get to, let me close some of this. So 72 for our heating. And two goes here, and 36.80 goes right here. Infiltration for cooling. Okay, so we check everything out, make sure we got everything completed in through here. All done, all done, all done, all done. Okay, uh, like I said, one occupant sensible BTU load equals 230. You can actually do that down here, right here. So how many occupants do we have? We had three. So we can go ahead and knock that out. 230 times three equals 690. So 690 will be latent B for occupants. Okay. How many plants do they have? Latent load for the plants? Well, if you looked at your survey, it said no plants. So no plants means 
until zero zero right there. Uh, we have not done the duct lossage yet. We hadn't done the late ventilation gain yet. So those two there can stay blank for right now. Uh, let's see what else do we have here? That should be it. Like I said, the next thing that you'd have to do would be line 14. I'm just going to take this little line here and just move it down here to where we're at for subtotals. Let's get rid of those. All right, so for my subtotals down here, all you're doing is you take any number up through here and we're going to add them all up. So you start right here and you just add up all your numbers right here and you come all the way down until you get all the way down here to subtotals. So we're going to do a complete uh, load calculation there. I'll have it in the next video. And you do the same down here on the other end. We still need to do, uh, we got some blank spots right here and right here. Appliances, 1200 BTUs. You're going to have 1200 BTUs worth of appliances. 1200. They said they had a range and a stove. Okay. And let's see that little space there right beside it. Okay, it's right here. So this is the 690. Uh, they're using 200 BTU occupant here, so we'll put the 690 here and we'll put 600 down there. Okay, we can. There's that one, so we want 600 down here. And 690 because 3 times 230 will give you 690 BTUs. Okay, so that should have us all the way up to there. So if you was looking at everything, uh, I'll just put a box up here just for a second. Go blue and white. That'll work and basically this is what you want to do right here it's just everything all the way up to there let's just do a subtotal just add all the everything up through here up through this column here from this point right here's windows all the way down for cooling and you'll get your subtotal right there all the way down here for heating and you'll get your subtotal right there once you've completed that in the next video, we're going to learn, move on to uh, duck lossage, duck lossage, and you know your sensible gains and stuff of that type. And manufacturer dealing with a blower, and basically get a lot of this remainder down here, the only part that we have left, back in here. So that way we don't have to uh, have this. This will all be completed, and that'll complete this part down here, and you can do your total BTU the entire house and know exactly what size equipment you may do use.